all heard that the process of getting tested for coronavirus involves collecting a sample using a nasal swab. But what happens after that? Well, let's go through the whole process. A thin swab is inserted into the patient's nasal passage for a few seconds. It absorbs the secretions from the surrounding tissue, kind of in the back of the throat. We then use that swab to look for the virus's genetic material. Now, while our human genetic material is stored as DNA, the virus uses RNA. So we look for viral RNA in that sample. We first have to remove everything else but RNA from that sample. So proteins and fats are chemically destroyed. Once you're left with only RNA, you have RNA that could be from the host, RNA that could be from other viruses, and RNA that could be from the coronavirus if it was present. Standard tests use a process called reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction, or RT-PCR. The first step of this is reverse transcription, where the RNA is used to produce DNA. Then a fragment of DNA is added to that DNA, and that's complementary to a target segment of DNA, in this case, for the virus. If the virus is present in the sample, the fragments that you've just added will bind to the target portion of the viral DNA. The exact target varies between tests, but the process is the same regardless. Then that DNA is amplified, and it's amplified through a process called polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. Now, for this process, the sample cycles through temperatures that trigger chemical reactions to copy the viral DNA. The DNA doubles in quantity with every cycle, so if you started with any DNA, you may have billions of copies by the end of just 35 cycles. At the end of this amplification stage, you measure how much DNA is in the sample. A negative result means that there is no detectable DNA found at the end of your thermocycles. A positive result means that the targeted DNA was detected. Remember, no test is perfect. False negatives can occur if the sample is collected or transported incorrectly. They can also occur if the test is done completely correctly if the patient simply isn't shedding a lot of virus at the time of sample collection. False positives can occur from sample contamination or by targeting non-unique segments of DNA, which results in the replication and detection of a similar virus, but not the target virus. Standardized kits are designed to reduce this error, and that's why we have CDC and WHO approved testing kits. After a patient recovers and clears the virus, they will no longer have viral RNA in their nasal secretions. So any RT-PCR test that's, con that's conducted after recovery will come back negative. These tests measure active infections only.